Do you know how much it would cost if we covered the Sahara into solar panels? Of course, it would be a multi-trillion dollar project. Wait till we do some math here. Let's start. So more sunlight will fall on the world's deserts in six hours than the entire world will consume over the next year. The Sahara Desert is mostly sand, actually. It doesn't have a defined surface and the winds make it constantly change, hills turning into valleys and vice versa. That would be definitely hard to bring whole solar panels into the place. It's nearly the same size as China. It spans across 10 different countries in three different time zones and it gets absolutely massacred by sunlight. This is a map that shows annual sunshine hours across the world. North and South America, Southern Africa have hotspots, but Sahara outshines all. Most of this China-sized chunk of land gets more than 3,600 hours of sunlight a year, and within that big chunk is this other chunk that gets more than 4,000 hours a year. For reference, that's nearly four times the amount of annual sunlight that Germany gets. The Sahara Desert is ideal for solar power due to its position along the Tropic of Cancer, which means the sun for a lot of the year is pretty much directly over it and the lack of clouds or even exist over the entire desert, which means all that sunlight is never interrupted. With uninterrupted sunlight, it's perfect for solar panels and farms. Imagine covering it all with solar panels. What if we covered the entire desert with solar panels? How much energy could we generate? How might this transform our planet? Let's take a deep dive. Nestled in the vast expanse of Morocco's desert lies the grandeur of modern engineering, the world's largest concentrated solar power plant. Spanning 25 square kilometers, this solar power station stands as a testament to human innovation. Its mammoth capacity of 582 megawatts of electricity is awe-inspiring, making it a beacon of sustainable energy. What sets it apart is its ability to store solar energy using superheated molten salt, ensuring uninterrupted power supply even after the sun sets. Morocco's ambitious vision for renewable energy is evident through their investment of over $9 billion. This endeavor is just the beginning. Morocco envisions replicating this marvel with four additional plants in the Sahara. Collectively, these plants will generate a staggering 2,000 megawatts fulfilling 38% of the nation's annual electricity needs. Morocco's dedication to harnessing the power of the sun not only illuminates the nation but also paves the way for a greener future. This project will transform Morocco into the world's leading solar energy state and as the only African country that currently has a power cable linked to Europe. Much of this energy will be exported for profit to the countries of the European Union. But all of this energy is created from just five relatively small plants. What happens when we scale things up a bit and think bigger? The Desertec Foundation, a key investor in Morocco's solar project, sees vast potential in Sahara solar energy. Research from the German Aerospace Center reveals a small solar array in the Sahara could power all of Germany. Scaling up, it could meet the entire European Union's needs and even the world's electricity demands, estimated at 18 trillion watts. This highlights the transformative power of Sahara's sun and the pioneering efforts of organizations like the Desertec Foundation. Considering that a typical solar panel generates roughly 350 watts of power, this earth-powering array would encompass around 51.4 billion solar panels, and it would be roughly the same size as the US state of New Mexico. In the vastness of the Sahara, where only about 2.5 million people reside, the potential for solar energy is staggering. The sparse population, akin to Siberia, allows for ambitious solar initiatives without significant impact on locals. Desertex vision doesn't aim to turn the entire Sahara into a solar farm, but it's no small feat. Their plan involves establishing massive solar farms along the Sahara's perimeter and into the Middle East. Once completed, these farms will predominantly power Africa and the Middle East with excess energy sent via cables to Europe potentially meeting 15% of the continent's electricity requirements. It's a bold endeavor, leveraging Sahara's expanse for a brighter, more sustainable future. This is a real-life plan that's undergone significant amounts of research and investment, but why are they only planning on building solar farms around the Sahara's perimeter? Well, while there's lots of obvious benefits to constructing solar farms in the empty Sahara, there's also lots of problems. First of all, the Sahara's emptiness itself is both a blessing and a curse. On the one hand, it means that almost nobody will have to be relocated or moved off of their land. 
But on the other hand, there isn't any infrastructure to actually get the massive amounts of supplies into place in any kind of cost-effective manner. I mean, look at this map. There's only like four or five, only a handful of roads stretch from north to south. Enormous stretches of land lie untouched, some areas more than 600 kilometers away from the nearest road, like the northwestern pocket of Chad. Transporting billions of solar panels to such remote locations would require constructing expensive new highways or railroads. Desert Tech, recognizing this challenge, plans to limit construction to areas with existing infrastructure. Yet if we pause to consider the sheer cost of solar panels for a Sahara-sized array, the magnitude of this endeavor becomes even more awe-inspiring. A pretty average 350-watt solar panel typically costs anywhere between $200 and $450 once fully installed. On a residential roof today, since we know that it's going to be expensive transporting and installing all of them in the middle of one of the world's most remote locations, we're going to stick with a high cost estimate here and tack on an additional 300 for delivery and infrastructure fees and 250 more dollars for installation fees. Conveniently, this math makes the total cost for each $350 watt panel exactly $1,000. So from there you can figure out pretty quickly that the 51.4 billion solar panels needed to fit inside of our new Mexico-sized array that'll power the entire planet will cost a cool 51.4 trillion US dollars. For reference, that's approximately 60% of the entire world's GDP, but it would enable us to immediately switch all of our electricity over to renewable solar, so that's pretty cool. All right then, Let's just assume that we've turned on infinite money and we expanded upon this by filling up the entire Sahara Desert with solar panels. What is going to happen now? Well, if we assume that the solar panels are 100% efficient, the entire Sahara Desert will probably now be producing somewhere around the neighborhood of 1.3 million terawatt hours of electricity per year. So to put that number into perspective, the entire contemporary human species consumed about 173,000 terawatt hours of energy in 2019. And that's not just electricity, that's all energy consumed for everything we did that year. A Sahara desert covered in solar panels would generate more than seven times the amount of energy that all of the over 8 billion humans of the world collectively consume right now. Obviously, this would present revolutionary changes to what mankind could be capable of, and not just even closer to a Type 1 Kardashev-style civilization, but this overwhelming power given to humanity by harnessing the entire Sahara would also come with some significant costs. The black surfaces of the solar panels dotting the Sahara will of course absorb most of the sunlight hitting the Sahara. Only a tiny fraction of that incoming energy will actually be converted into electricity, while the overwhelming majority will be returned back to the environment as heat. In turn, this heat will trigger a sort of feedback loop in which the heat emitted by the solar panels would create a steep temperature differential between the land and the surrounding oceans. This will ultimately lower the surface air pressure and cause moist air to rise and condense into clouds and rain across the desert. So by covering the entire Sahara with solar panels, we'll also unwittingly be terraforming the desert Sahara into a green Sahara at the same time. In some ways, this will be good because it will open up a massive amount of land the size of China to colonize human settlement and critically for the emerging economies of North Africa, extensive economic development for their countries and their people. But in other ways, this will be really bad. The Amazon rainforest over in South America is extensively fed and fertilized by dust coming over from the Sahara that gets blown across the Atlantic, while the Atlantic ecosystems themselves also benefit from this fertile dust as well. Removing all of the sands of the Sahara Desert could create a cascade of unforeseen events that could wipe out entire ecosystems in the Atlantic, the Amazon, and probably beyond, and create an epic climate catastrophe, the likes we have never seen before. In summary, covering the entire Sahara with solar panels would be epic, but it's also not feasible. It's probably pretty dangerous, and it's not even necessary either. We only need solar panels covering the area of New Mexico to meet all 8 billion humans' modern electricity needs. And they don't even need to be all in the same place. They can be spread out across all of the world's deserts or anywhere where it's sunny. And hopefully, by the end of the century, we'll have made some pretty decent progress here. Well, what do you think? Should we build all the solar panels across the Sahara Desert? I am sure you are going to love to watch our video about hidden secrets of the Sahara Desert on our channel. Make sure to subscribe to us and never miss our amazing videos like this. Thank you for watching and we will see you in the next video. Till then, stay tuned.